So this is one of Diddy, Diddy's houses that was raided. As you guys can see, they basically opened up every single drawer, multiple safes. And with them going through all of his stuff, allegedly they have found much more evidence when it comes to past cases like Kim Porter, one of his girlfriends before Jada, like back in the day. She was planning on exposing Diddy back then and she ended up coming up dead. A lot of people believe that that's why she ended up coming up dead is that Diddy had actually set a hit on her. And, you know, they always cover it up with some sort of, like, random disease. Or, and you know, they just make something up after. So, in this video right here, we're going to look at this. It says, new evidence. Diddy took out Kim Porter for threatening to expose him. Let's see what's going on. He financed and supported the same thing he did with Cassidy. Cassie. It's the same thing he did with Kim. I mean, I think we have the strongest being. Like, if you come to like a category of who's the strongest being on the face of the earth, it would have to be black mothers. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. What's dead? Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost if you want to meet the devil in real life, you can take one good look at Diddy. The record producer has been exposed for all the nastiest things you can think of, from smuggling people and substances to mistreatment and whatnot. In light of this information, fans have been forced to revisit Diddy's past, and one person whose story intrigues everyone is Kim Porter. Over the years, Kim's untimely demise has been a subject of great controversy in the industry, with many suspecting foul play on Diddy's part. And though the allegations remained unconfirmed for a long time, it seems like Diddy might have had a solid motive to end the life of the mother of his kids after all. Just what new evidence did authorities stumble on? And did Diddy actually take out Kim Porter for threatening to expose him? Let's find out. Puff Daddy is the king yeah. of deception. Yeah. Every time we was in the party, oh, he was throwing his champagne, his, his vodka in every picture. He was, he was, it's just, so we didn't know. We like, yo, he's a great guy. This is a great party. This is a great, yo, give me your clothes. I'm gonna rock it in the video. Yo, 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 yo. Sean John sold 400 million. Champagne, this, 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 this. Boy, the joke's on us. Yeah. He been doing this for real. Yeah. And we can't be mad at him. We always got to use them as inspiration. On November 15th, 2018, Kim was found unresponsive in her home in the San Fernando Valley area of the city. Emergency services were called who pronounced her dead on the scene. And just like that, Kim passed away at the age of 47, leaving her four That's kids and the world in a state of shock. The fact that someone as young and healthy as Kim passed away because of pneumonia didn't exactly add up for some people. It was simply too out of the blue. As per Diddy, Kim had been suffering from the flu for a while. A few days before the fateful incident, she sent the kids to his house, asking him, Puffy, take care of my babies. Little did Combs know that would be her last words to him. Though at first, the circumstances surrounding her death remained shrouded in mystery. An autopsy report soon cleared up the confusion. According to medical analysis, Kim had passed away from low bar pneumonia. However, not everyone was buying it, and for valid reasons too, which is why, to this day, Kim's death remains a subject of great controversy. And at the center of it all is Sean Diddy Combs. Diddy and Kim first crossed paths in the late 80s while Porter was working as a receptionist at Uptown Records, and it looks like she managed to catch Diddy's eyes. At the time, Kim was married to singer Al B. Shore. The two said their vows in 1989, only to part ways in 1990, which gave Diddy the chance to swoop in and make his move. Diddy recalled the moment he first laid eyes on Kim during an interview with Essence in 2006. You could tell he was down bad, as he said. The first time I saw her, she was at the studio with her ex-boyfriend, singer Al B. Sure, the father of Porter's oldest child, Quincy. I wasn't trying to holler at her or anything, but I was admiring her, her lips, her eyes, her mouth, her shape, her energy, and thinking, I wish I had a girl like that. And so the two began dating in 1994. Fast forward to three years later, and Kim was pregnant with their first son, Christian, in 1997. But it seems like the prospect of being a dad was too much for Diddy, because he ran out of the relationship faster than the wind and straight into Jennifer Lopez's arms in 1998. Now, Diddy and Jennifer- Hey, Diddy. You over here feeding over a married woman just to put a baby in her and dip? That's crazy, man. We're the hottest couple on the block. That fall, Puffy hit the papers again. 
This time because of his romance with actress Jennifer Lopez. The media couldn't get enough of the glittering pair. But do you know what's messed up? Kim learned about the relationship on social media like everyone else. You'd think as the mother of his son, Diddy would have been upfront about it. But no. However, Kim was better than that. She kept her calm and simply moved on with her life. But what I absolutely love about Kim Porter is back in the day, when Diddy left Kim Porter for JLo, Kim Porter supposedly didn't even react to it. She caught pictures of him like online with him and JLo and they were out at like clubs and parties together. And that's how she found out he was cheating on her. Um, and apparently she said nothing. And that ate away at Diddy. Supposedly he was just waiting for Kim to react. He wanted her attention and she just wouldn't give it to him. When asked about her thoughts on Diddy's new relationship, here's what she said. That relationship wasn't real. The world just saw the bright lights in the camera, but I knew what was really going on. He was still in love with me. He was calling 50, 60 times a day. Sometimes I wouldn't even talk to him because I was so angry. I couldn't be nice, Kim. I had to be, you know, that B word. Like, this is not going down. Honestly, go girl. But before we move on, let's take a step back. Notice how Kim talked about Diddy calling her 50 to 60 times a day. Well, she might be mincing her words here. You see, According to Gene Deal, Diddy would have people follow Kim around the whole time he was in a relationship with J-Lo. We would leave Jennifer's house. He would call a babysitter. If Kim was out on the town, we was going to every spot in New York City that the babysitter thought she was at. That's wild. Do you hear me? That's a Even different when type he of wasn't dealing right with there. her, he wanted complete control over her life, over what she did and how she did. So that's not hard to that's not hard to to uh, that's not hard to believe. And plus, she was way younger than Kim. Me looking at this lawsuit, she say that, you know, Diddy, he forced her to do drugs. I mean, she recalled a time where, you know, Diddy gave her a blue pill, and later on she found out Diddy was ecstasy. That's one of Diddy's M.O. I know a former record executive during the time that they gave Donna Ross that, that anniversary in California. One of his former record executives met with him. And I guess he was trying to pray with him or whatever. But he tried to give him a pill. That's his MO. Now that's what people call a But he tried to give him a pill. Diddy out here giving pills to everyone, men and women. He said, yo, this man is a demon, bro. <laughs> this is why at this point, we over here calling people Diddy survivors. Because, yo, if you around Diddy and make it out with nothing up your butt, you done survived Diddy. It seemed like most people don't end up surviving him, man. That's his M.O. Now that's what people call a control freak. To make it even worse, according to Mark Curry, Diddy went as far as to bug Kim's phone, all because <clears> he <throat> wanted to control every aspect of her life. Anytime a man would go out his way to wiretap someone's phone or, or put taps in their homes just to monitor their But that's another thing. After they did the raid on his house, they found hella hidden cameras everywhere, bro. Conversation, that's a sign of insanity. So when you see someone doing that, you can't, you can't, you can, you can, you can imagine everything else they do. What do you think he's going to do if he found um, her on the phone talking to someone and, and uh, or feels that he, she's cheating on him or somebody sleeping with his girl? What you think he's going to say? Ooh, I caught you. Ooh, I heard this. Now nah, he's going to come in with the, you know, it's going to be a fight. But that's something that, that you've seen fight. from the inside. When you're on the inside looking out, it's like looking at Blueface and his girlfriend always arguing on TV. They toxic relationship. So when you're on the inside looking out, 
you don't really see them like fighting. You just be like, they tripping. They have a, this is their relationship. It's been going on like that with them for years. And when he found out that she was interested in another man, he apparently lured her on a boat. Staff members on board heard a screaming match in the early hours of the morning before the situation escalated, leaving Kim with a broken nose. Porter hey. ended up suing Diddy for child support right around this time, but she dropped the case when J-Lo dumped Diddy and the record producer came crawling back to Kim in 2003. Though no one expected Kim to take back Diddy given the way he cut her off in the first place, still there they were, by each other's sides once more. Before anyone knew it, Kim was pregnant with twins. It almost looked like they were growing into wow. one happy family, which is why a lot of folks were expecting Diddy to get down on one knee and pop the question. But the music mogul never walked down the aisle with Kim. Many thought that Diddy had commitment issues, but the record executive clarified his reasons for not exchanging vows with Kim in an interview with Essence magazine. He said, I know she deserves to get married. It's not a reflection on how much I love Kim. It's that I'm just learning how to be a good boyfriend. When I'm finished with this step, I'll move on to the next. That said, it's kind of for the best, Kim never walked down the aisle with Diddy because from what the birdies have been whispering, Diddy treated Kim the same way he treated Cassie. Mind you, Kim never opened up about the mistreatment behind closed doors. However, what fans do know is that Diddy was disloyal right to the bone. Five months before Diddy welcomed his baby girls in December 2006, he fathered another child named Chance with his side piece and longtime associate Sarah Chapman, which proved to be the final straw for Porter. However, what's interesting is that she was not blindsided by Diddy's confession. In fact, she knew about it all along. According to some rumors, Kim had hired a private investigator to keep an eye on Diddy. While talking about the incident, Kim said, he told me that he may have gotten himself into a situation and he may have fathered another child outside the relationship. And I said, really? Well, I already knew. I'm glad you decided to be a man. I was like, dude, this is so whack. I can't even respect you right now. And for me, once the respect is gone, I'm not even listening to you. It looks like Kim finally learned to play by Diddy's rules. Once she learned of his infidelity, Kim Kim bided her time and waited for the perfect chance to make her exit. Fortunately, an opportunity presented itself when Diddy was out of town for some business. Reportedly, Kim was quick on her feet. She packed her bags and the house, including the nursery furniture, and walked out of Diddy's life. As for why she chose to do it that way, well, Kim explained, I wanted to be dramatic. I wanted him to know I wasn't breaking up with him for two weeks or maybe leaving for two days. If I pack up everything, twins and all, it means I'm out. Yet despite the relationship falling apart, Kim and Diddy continued to stay on friendly terms. While talking about her relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Porter had nothing but nice words. She said, Sean and I have this bond, this friendship. It's not about if you're faithful to Instagram murky. Kim died on November 15th, 2018, but the autopsy report didn't come out until two months later, which only confirmed that Porter died of natural causes and that no foul play was detected. However, it didn't exactly make sense why the autopsy report took two months to be finally said. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attacks and pneumonia-like symptoms. And Wait. the coroner's report that said from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attacks and pneumonia-like symptoms. And Unfortunately, for everyone who suspected Diddy, nothing came of the investigation. With that said, fans across the world had no choice but to make peace with Kim's sudden demise. However, the loss proved to be too heavy for some folks, including Kim's ex-husband, Al B. Shore. Despite being divorced, the pair was still on good terms, and so when Al B. was informed of Kim's tragic passing, he was beyond grief. A typical reaction would have been to shed a few tears on camera and ask for some time away from the spotlight. But what Al did next shocked the entire industry, especially P. Diddy. Following the news of Kim's passing, Al B. posted a photo of the pair with an ominous caption saying, she sent me this saying, life imitating art, art imitates life. Now it all makes sense. She told me other stuff too. She was running a marathon. He also wrote, I do know very clearly that Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some bullshit in a separate post. His words seemed to imply that Kim was in fact on the run from someone powerful, perhaps someone like Diddy. Not to mention, Al talked 
talked about Kim being in touch with the FBI. Knowing what we know now about the record executive, the theory sounds almost plausible. Let's be real. Of there's one thing that all the allegations against the record producer have proved anything, it's that he's capable of the lowest of the low. So if Kim was really on the run from someone, that someone must have definitely been Diddy. Though back then, a lot of folks assumed that Al B was only having a hard time coming to terms with the loss, which is why he was coming up with these absurd narratives. But then something truly shocking went down. Soon after hinting at foul play behind Kim Porter's death, Al B found himself fighting for his life in the hospital, owing to health complications. Given the timings of the events, many thought that Al B was taken out for pointing fingers, particularly Sean Diddy That's Combs. Very to be weird. fair, it's not exactly Diddy's first rodeo. He's been accused of taking out someone more times than you can count. Remember Tupac Shakur or Biggie Smalls? Safe to say, he's a shark, and anyone who swims too close pays the price. Now with Tupac and Biggie, we get it. Tupac was the only one threatening his hold in the industry, and Biggie was acting out. But what about Kim Porter? Just what possible reason could Diddy have for taking out the mother of his children? Well, for years, there's been a running theory that Kim was writing a tell-all book to expose Diddy exactly for who he was. She's been by his side for 13 years, so if anyone knew about the inner workings of his business, it was her. Kim probably told all that shit in her book, you understand, that up and got missing the day she died. It's the same way that Cassie gathered enough evidence to pursue a case against Diddy. Bearing that in mind, we can bet good money on the fact that Kim had some serious dirt on Diddy, one which could shake the very foundations of his career. And this is where fans need to put on their thinking caps. If you look at the facts, you'll see that three out of the big five who founded Uptown Records are in their graves. Interestingly, all three of them happen to be working on tell-all books around the time of their passing. You wanna know what they all had in common though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. What's more, following Kim's passing, her place was broken into. Yo, it's like now that I'm thinking about it, thinking about it, like this really goes deeper than we think, because these are like the two top people that control the music industry. <clears throat> you have Diddy, and then you have Jay Z. Diddy at this point is associated with almost every single mainstream artist. They most most of them have gotten the Diddy treatment. You already seen Mick, Mick Mill got the Diddy treatment, and then we also have Jay Z. Jay Z works very like much more subtle, but with all these things getting exposed with Diddy, Jay Z is most likely going to be the next person to come. All that to say is that it's been multiple instances where people were going to expose him, and he has taken them out. Like, nah, you're not gonna you're not gonna expose him. And the way the music industry is ran, it's is ran to control the minds of the people. You know, if you could just listen to any music, it's actually very perverted on both the man, male artist and the female artist. All talking about violence. So, this is actually a pretty big moment in music history, as as we're speaking right now for the entire rate that's going on, and the uh, Diddy actually being exposed for who he truly is. Her laptop was stolen, erasing all traces of the tell-all book she was working on. And if you thought that was fishy, well, there's more. Back in 2022, Diddy ended up in the tabloids when his former nanny sued him for wrongful termination. Apparently, the woman who was identified as Jane Roe in court documents was responsible for overseeing the care of the twins, Delilah and Jesse, following Porter's passing in 2018. And anyone who's gone through the girls' social media knows how much the two adored her. They seem to have a special bond. However, it all all fell apart when Roe requested a maternity leave in August 2020 since she had fallen pregnant. You'd think given how close the girls were with the babysitter, Diddy would have just said yes and that would be it. But no, apparently Diddy fired the poor woman for setting a bad example for the girls by getting pregnant without being married. Nah, I'm talking about she used to babysit, little Spanish girl used to babysit Kristen. When Kristen was real little, the twins wasn't even nowhere around at the time. <laughs> nah, so now, Diddy's bodyguard? Be having all the information. He's telling everyone everything about the whole situation, bro. Yeah, let's see what Gene Deal has to say. Check this out. 
Gene deals with that guy. I said, my man, what's wrong with you? He just looked at me. Because I used to have to put her in the cab every Saturday or Sunday morning. Because she'd be leaving this house. And Chris wasn't even there. You understand? Or you go up in the room, she coming out the room. That's not here nor there right now. Because the chickens come home to roost. We know that. Did y'all see in the paper? No, so I'm a, I'm a loo. No, so I'm a loo. New with the late model and not the music mogul. And so she became a piece that Diddy needed to get rid of. That said, Diddy's legal team is never one to... As Kim's niece, her loyalties would always lie with the late model and not the music mogul. And so she became a piece that Diddy needed to get rid of. That said, Diddy's legal team is never one to slack off. They quickly responded to the situation and clarified that it was a meritless shakedown to extort money by a part-time babysitter who had no familial relationship with Porter. They also clarified that Rose's removal was planned and agreed to long before she even mentioned that she was pregnant. Still, Jane pursued her case. That said, Al B. Sheer and internet theorists aren't the only ones who think Diddy had something to do with Kim's passing. If it was up to the American model's BFF, Kimora Lee, she'd put Diddy in handcuffs herself. Kimora and Diddy might have adored the same person, but there was no love between them. In fact, according to some reports, Diddy allegedly threatened to kick Kimora in the stomach while she was pregnant. Yeah, you can always count on Diddy Dang. to leave you shocked or disgusted. That said, Kimora never let her disdain for Diddy ruin her friendship with Kim. Back when she first learned of Kim's passing, she rushed to her house unable to believe the news and broke down in tears when she realized that her friend really was gone. That said, even years later, Kimora is still Team Kim. Right around the time Cassie filed her lawsuit against Diddy, Lee took to her Instagram to post a shady story calling out Diddy. She wrote, As you sow, so shall you reap. Let's also not forget that back in the day, Kimora was dead set on getting the authorities to reopen Kim's case because her gut kept telling her that Diddy was guilty. Mind you, this is Kimora Lee we're talking about, a close friend of Kim's, not a conspiracy theorist making rumors for the fun of it. At the end of the day, one thing's for sure, if anyone knew the ins and outs of Diddy's business, it was Kim Porter. She had known him since his uptown days, and that information alone made her the scariest person on earth for Diddy. There's also the fact that the only person who benefited from Kim's untimely demise was Diddy. However, it turns out that he may have celebrated a little too early. According to some reports, Cassie turned in video footage, a USB drive, and Kim Porter's burner phone over to the FBI. There are rumors that Kim reportedly met up with Cassie a few days before her passing and gave her the burner phone, which allegedly contains video footage of Diddy's infamous FOs. Safe to say, the ghosts of Diddy's past are going to haunt him for a very, very long time. As for fans, they're still urging authorities to look into the matter, especially with all that's come to light about Diddy. One fan commented, I don't understand why nobody is looking more into the- Hey bro, we gonna leave that right there. I mean... With the amount of allegations that this one man has against him, with his ex exes coming out, filing lawsuits, I mean, we understand, like, you could, you could be very close with a friend, but when you get into a relationship, an intimate relationship with, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or wife, they know the sides of you that not many people know. And Cassidy ended up filing a lawsuit, that ended up getting settled, but now the entire Kim Porter situation, even with Kim Porter's best friend, Really feeling that Diddy had done something because she might have been writing a, a tell-all book and she knew the ins and outs of his business. It really does not seem far-fetched at all whatsoever. Comment down below what you guys think. Do y'all think Diddy actually went that far to take her out? Or do y'all think this is all just gossip, conspiracy theory, and it's just all up in the air? I want to I wanna know what you guys have to say, so comment that down below. Make sure you do smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one the same way you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace.